Hello and welcome back to the 75th anniversary podcast. We are here with a special guest today, Julie Garofalo. Julie is the executive director of Waterleaf Pregnancy Resource Center in Aurora. And we're meeting with her because this episode is going live in the month of October, which is traditionally a month devoted to respect life. So Julie, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for asking me. It's a real pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's been awesome uh, being here a couple of years in the diocese, getting to learn about Waterleaf, visit Waterleaf. But for those who are not familiar, can you tell us about uh, where you're located and the services that you offer women? Okay, so we are currently located um, in Aurora, Illinois. So the services that we provide at Waterleaf um, are what we call early pregnancy screening. So that involves a medical grade pregnancy test. And when that test is positive, we'll do an ultrasound uh, to confirm three things. The location of her pregnancy, the gestational age of her pregnancy, and the viability of her pregnancy. And these are really important things to know uh, for women who are considering abortion. The third element of that ultrasound is the viability. Many people don't know that about one in three pregnancies ends naturally in a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. uh, and many women have miscarriages and never know they were even mm -hmm. pregnant. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a number that I didn't believe when I first started doing no, this. No, it's definitely something not spoken a lot about. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't believe it until I started looking at our own statistics yeah. and the number of women we see and the number that are coming back yeah. and telling us that they uh, miscarried their baby. So when we don't see that viability, we don't see a heartbeat um, or we see an empty gestational sac or we see something that yeah. does not look right, we're going to be sending that woman to her doctor for further evaluation. Yeah and care. So, you know, there's so many elements about what we do that are there for the woman's health and mm -hmm. safety. Uh, the ultrasound too, for many people, is that window to the womb. Mm -hmm. You know, many women who do see that pregnancy in the ultrasound uh, will change their mind. Uh, I had a woman who came in once and uh, she was 14 weeks She'd already been at two abortion clinics and by the grace of God walked out of both of them, but had did not see her um, ultrasound at either one. Mm -hmm. And she was very nervous, of course, and then she stopped us in the middle of the ultrasound. She goes, wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me that there is a fully formed living being living inside of me? Mm -hmm. And we said, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. And she said, why didn't anybody else ever tell me that? Yeah, praise God. She made exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, she did not make a life decision that day or yeah. the next two visits. Yeah. But after about three visits, she did decide to make a, a life yeah. decision. And miracle, miracles, her baby was born on Christmas Day. That's beautiful. So that's pretty cool. Um, within that pregnancy screening is also an opportunity for our the patient to speak with an advocate. Yeah who will really look at her situation and just hear her out yeah. where she's coming from. Uh, that advocate also provides options counseling, so she will talk to her about her options uh, and uh, answer any questions she might have. But typically in this first appointment, we're not trying to give her answers to everything. We're just trying to give her the truthful information that she does have choices, that she is or is not pregnant, that her pregnancy is viable and what are her her options at that point. Um, we also offer her an opportunity for some spiritual time Great. during that appointment. Uh, we also provide, and we don't refer, recommend, or dispense birth control in any way, but we do educate on birth control because there are a lot of things that women don't know about the risk and side effects of hormonal or barrier methods. Uh, and then we also uh, talk to them about natural methods, so fertility awareness, mm -hmm. natural family planning. So that's part of um, the STD testing. Then finally, we, in our medical side, we provide uh, abortion pill reversal services. So if a woman has taken that first abortion pill and has not taken the second and she regrets that decision, mm -hmm. there's about a 68% chance that she can recover that pregnancy by starting an abortion pill reversal protocol. But progesterone has been used for over 50 years mm -hmm. uh, in the treatment of pregnancies to sustain pregnancies Absolutely. that might not, you know, be sustainable because a woman's body does not naturally make as much progesterone right. as it needs. Absolutely. Um, and you know, it's it's hard when you have seen and you have held and you have played with babies who have been born 
because of the abortion pill reversal process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can't tell me that it's not, mm -hmm. it doesn't work because I know it does. Sure. Uh, and so those are the medical services that we provide. We also provide a vast array of support services. So our Aspire Resource and Education Department um, provides um, a woman who would like these services. We never force anything on anybody. It's also always by their permission. Uh, so we offer, we offer, we offer, we offer, and if they accept, we will give them everything that we have in our power to help them. So within Aspire, we have resource assessments and plans. So we will go through with a woman all of her, uh, you know, circumstances. What is your housing stability? What is your food stability? What is your child care stability? What is your medical stability? What do you have? What don't you have? What do you need? Um, and then we will connect them with the places that can uh, provide those resources. So we partner with a lot of community resources. Uh, we do what we do best and then we work with the people that do what they do best. So, um, you know, we will get them connected with those resources. If it requires a referral on our part, we will recommend them and refer them. If it requires an application, we will help them with that. But we expect them to have skin in the game mm -hmm. and to also do the pieces that they need to do because in that, you're building their confidence in their ability to parent and to be a good parent. Uh, and you're, you're empowering them uh, to know that they can still go to school and they can still uh, have their job and they can still do all these things and be a parent and be a great parent. Uh, so that's part of what they do there. They also, we also do a lot of education within the Aspire um, department. Uh, they do all of that education I talked to you about that is uh, for healthy relationships and sexual risk avoidance and birth control education. But they also work with the women who choose to go through our, um, it's called Bright Course. So during COVID, we learned that we could actually stream all these courses that we have. And participation in courses went way up because it was convenient for women. And they found that these classes were very interesting. So we have an array of over 200 classes in English and in Spanish uh, that women watch. We, we send the links to them. They watch them on whatever device they want. Uh, we can see on the back end that they've been watched all the way through. We can see how they've answered all the assessments. And then the final piece of that is then they connect with their resource specialist and they discuss these classes. So they have a class discussion. And when they complete about four courses, then they earn a gift card. So instead of having a boutique like many centers do, we give gift cards so that they can get what they need. Uh, we had many times people would come and say, that's nice, but you don't have the size of diapers I need, or I really need gas to get to work, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what the education is there, and there's all sorts of, you know, not only pregnancy and labor and delivery, but infant care, one-year-old, two-year-olds, potty training, parenting, co-parenting, uh, fatherhood classes, spiritual development classes, you name it, there's classes on it. The third element there is counseling. We have a lot of women who are suffering from abuse or from trauma or something, so we have a counselor that works with them. We do a lot of uh, pregnancy loss support, so loss through um, miscarriage, stillbirth, abortion, or adoption. And that is um, unfortunately very um, popular Right now, there's a lot of women calling for uh, abortion, post-abortive support. Mm -hmm. They are devastated by their decision, mm -hmm. uh, and they are dealing with a great deal of grief, mm -hmm. uh, and they don't know how to handle it. Uh, then we have male mentoring, so we have some male uh, volunteers who come in, and they connect with the dads, and uh, either the dads or the men who did not want their partners to abort, and they are suffering post-abortive loss, and they don't know how to deal with it. Uh, and then we have um, spiritual growth. So if a woman expresses a desire to either increase her prayer life or perhaps find a faith community or just talk more about her spiritual journey, uh, we have a team that works with them on that. So it's a wide variety of support that women get from us. So little one building, it looks sure. beautiful, but wow, what goes on inside is amazing.
No, so, absolutely. So, I don't think people understand. I didn't understand, and I, I consider myself familiar with water leaf. Mm -hmm. I probably knew about less than half of those things. Right. I think it's great for people to know. These are the things going on there. Um, and these are the things that if you have these gifts or charisms or backgrounds, these are ways you can help in the Respect Life movement. There's not just a one niche thing that that's what Respect Life is. So, it's something to pray and consider uh, for, for our listeners. Um, why don't we talk just a little bit about the facility? It, it is a breathtaking facility. Mm -hmm. uh, not my, maybe not what you would expect when you walk in. Can you tell us about the design and why that played such a why that plays such a key role in the work you do? Sure. Um, when we we never really intended to be in that location. Our when we opened, it was a lot of people were protesting that that Planned Parenthood was being built there, but our founders were like, you know, th that ship has sailed. Mm -hmm. It's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. We have to have a place nearby where women can go. So our very first office and clinic was about a block away in a strip mall. It's now a pizza place. Uh, and we were there for a couple of years, um, maybe five years before we outgrew it. And we moved about a half a mile the other direction, but always on, on the same street as Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't, when, we, when our lease was up on that building and we were busting at the seams, we didn't necessarily go right away and said we want to buy this piece of property. It was the way God works. And in talking with the owners of the property, it was, it was a group of owners. And within that group was someone who really understood what we were all about and understood that there needed to be a clear dichotomy between darkness and light. Mm -hmm. And he said, you need an architect who understands this, and I have the architect for you. And so this person uh, contracted with the architect and actually paid for all the architectural drawings and all the architectural work, and was very clear with them that this needed to be a building that radiated hope, mm -hmm. and that it needed to be clean and clear and crisp, uh, and that's what it is. You know, mm -hmm. and like I say, in the light, you know, our yeah, first it's a year. place you don't mind spending time. You don't you know, mind spending I was, I was like, time this, there. This is nice. You can spend time there, and yeah. Yeah, um, it's um, you know it has lots of windows, lots of natural light. Yeah. Which for the first year for us was really hard, hard because we had no shades or anything, and got really hot in there mm -hmm. in the summer, and got really cold in the winter. But we figured all that out, um, and as they put it together, you know where the front door is and what the reception area looks like. It has very tall ceilings and these beautiful chandeliers. Even the furniture, the light yeah. fixtures, everything, everything looks like it was coordinated. It, and it was. Uh, again, God um, yeah. sent us someone who didn't know who we were. Yeah. When they learned who we were, they came forward and they're, they were a well-known interior designer, yeah. nationally well-known interior designer, yeah. has a heart for this work and beautiful. said, I would like to design the interior beautiful. of your building. So not only designed, but curated all of the so, furniture. And in everything. other words, Waterleaf started on a mission. God sent the resources. Absolutely. Right? Water, yeah, and that's, that's kind of how God works, right? It you is something how Something in works. your heart for his glory, mm -hmm. he'll send the tools and the people. And we see that every single day. I think the most um, beautiful part of, for us of our whole uh, center is the chapel. Yeah. Um, that's actually the next thing I want to bring up about the space is uh, what struck me on my visit was prayer throughout, statues of Mary throughout, but then the chapel. So please right. tell us about how faith and spirituality is kind of mingled in with the, with the design. Right. So um, one thing about serving patients, um, for many pregnancy research centers of the past, you would walk in and there would be pictures of babies everywhere and there would yeah. be quotes everywhere and scripture and all of this, which really is not what a woman who's in this crisis It's a lot. It's a lot in that right moment, here. yeah. And it's very coercive. So the medical side of our building is very clean and crisp, yeah. and it is very welcoming, and you feel the warmth and you feel the love, but you don't have all of that display. Yeah. But in our offices, you know, of course we can have, you know, whatever it is that we want. Inspires, inspires just, just yeah. That is displayed. And uh, with the chapel, it is just... A beautiful chapel that um, we had that was specifically designed into this plan. We had had a chapel in our very first building. Yeah, 
so we outgrew thought, and we had to make it an office. We had to set yeah. chapel and our second building became an office. This is designated space. So in other words, the chapel is not an afterthought. It is it was, not. It was a primary key piece of the design it of the was. space. So I do want to make a plug for One Diocesan Initiative. This is airing in October and in November we have a uh, Rachel's Vineyard Retreat. Mm -hmm. That's a, a retreat for post-abortive healing for men and women. Uh, so please check that out on our Diocesan website. But Julie, for those who want to get involved in Waterleaf, what are some of the ways? Oh, there's so many ways. Uh, first of all, please pray. Uh, that there, That is the most important thing. There's so much to pray for in here. Um, second of all, um, everything that we provide for women is provided free of charge. Yeah. And we see over 100 women a month for pregnancy tests. And so when you just think about the the how much you would pay to go see a doctor for a pregnancy test and ultrasound screening yeah. and having someone read and sign that ultrasound and send those records on that would be very expensive for women mm -hmm. uh, we can do it a little less expensively but it's still not at no cost yeah. so supporting us financially is really important um, our budget is you know last year we provided 1.6 million dollars worth of services to the women and men that we served. Um, this, how big is your team at Waterleaf? Our team, so about a third of our team is actual paid staff. Yep. And there's only about six of us that are full-time. The, the other 10 or so are part-time. Yep. The other 30 people are all volunteers. That's amazing. So um, we have a very robust volunteer um, program. Uh, for most of our volunteers, it is direct. Uh, engagement with the women and men that we serve. There is a long training period. Sure. We, we invest a lot in you in training, yeah. but I have to say we have some of the best um, people on our team. God sends them to us. God, God puts our team together. So if you're feeling that call and you're being nudged and you're saying, I just I want to help, but I don't know what to I do. Haven't I, done it. Where, I haven't done I, it. I haven't done it. Exactly. Listen to that call and yeah. come. We do not know how that's going to turn out. But we know that every single person that God sends us, mm -hmm. he has a plan for There's you. There's a reason for that. And I have people who come and they come and talk to me about it and they go, you know, this isn't for me. I'm sorry I wasted your time. And I said, no. I said, we don't know how God intended to use you. Even a visit is not a waste exactly. of time. Exactly. It could have been a changed perspective. Exactly. Or, absolutely. And you may be down the line, someone you know may be saying to you, my daughter or absolutely. my friend or whatever is pregnant and we don't know what to do. And you're going to say, Go to Waterleaf. I know them. You can trust them. They will take good care of you. Absolutely. And that may be what God intended for you all along. Absolutely. Or he may intend it for you to be part of our team. Uh, we do work as a team. You walk in our building, you would not know who's a volunteer and who's not. Yeah. Uh, we, we work very hard at that because that cohesiveness has to be felt. Yeah. That love has to be felt by that woman that comes in with every single person she engages with. Oh, thank you, Julia. Yeah, just amazing the ways to get involved. Again, if, if you're feeling that call, please reach out. We'll put the link to their website mm -hmm. in the show notes. Um, I want to ask, just uh, close with one more question, Julie. You shared a lot of great stories mm -hmm. of the impact you uh, Waterleaf has had. Anything else that stands out, like a particular story from your time serving with Waterleaf? Oh, there are so many. Um, <laughs> but I, I, for me, I have a couple of patients that just hold a very special place in my heart and I consider their children like my own grandchildren because yeah. they are my daughter's yeah. ages. And for some reason, I don't normally uh, do advocacy, um, uh, but for some reason on the days that they came in, I happened to be the one who was there and I really felt it was that that was God's plan, mm -hmm. that I was supposed to be their advocate. And one of them was, um, both of them were abortion determined. One is the one that had been to the two abortion clinics beforehand. Uh, and one was an APR patient and she called us and I happened to be the one who was on the line. Um, after hours, mm -hmm. I got the call. Uh, I scheduled the appointment with her, got my team together. We went in on a Sunday to see her because it's very time critical. Uh, so I actually was, one of the people who came in to, to meet with her and to serve her that day and then um, kind of kept up with her a little bit on a little bit of follow-up. Uh, and she ended up being our speaker last year. Mm. Uh, 
her partner suddenly passed away um, before her twins, she had twins, uh, before her twins were three months old. Wow. And we've stayed in contact with her, we've been supporting her. Um, she is just, she walked in the building the other day to bring me some papers, I'm helping her, uh, we're helping her with some legal things, and she needs to bring me some papers, and everything in the clinic stopped. Mm -hmm. And everybody had to stop and give her a big hug and say hello to her, and uh, there's just such a, um, you know, they make such an impact on you, and they know how much you care about them. And I think that's a beautiful thing about the Respect Life movement. It is, we have a God that is relational. He's the Trinity. Absolutely. And it's meant to be relational work. Mm -hmm. It's meant to set up uh, a conversation, then a friendship that can develop, mm -hmm. and, then, and then walking together. So Yeah, I'll tell you, you're going you're gonna to save more women and more lives when you reach out with love and compassion and you yeah. simply say, do you need to talk to someone? Yeah. Everything else is lost on them. Absolutely. So, you know, there, there's just so many ways to, um, to respect life, yeah. starting with respecting that young woman. You know, she, she, she knows that life is messy. Yeah. She feels so much on her shoulders and she just needs to know that she's not alone. Everyone has a story, I'm telling Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Everyone has a story. Absolutely. Well, we were both just at a Mass with Bishop Hicks, and he, he spoke about the three cardinal virtues. These three things remain faith, hope, and love. Absolutely. God is love. That resonated um, with me a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note of Bishop's homily, uh, next month we're going to focus on All Saints and All Souls Day. So there's always that hope, right, that for even those that, that don't make it into this world for whatever reason, that we can be reunited with them. Um, so we look forward to that episode next month on All Saints and All Souls Day in November. Julie, I want to thank you for being our guest for October. Thanks for asking me. this month of Respect Life. Thank you for all the work you do at Waterleaf. You bet. Everyone, please pray for them. Think of ways the Lord might be asking you to get involved in this important movement. And we are looking for nurses and a director of operations. So if you're looking for a job, let me know. <laughs> there you go. We'll have the website in the show notes. May God bless you all. And we'll see you next month for the 75th anniversary podcast. God bless.